Right, because I think what I think I'm seeing is, you know, we've got two different things happening because this is going right at the heart of the Postal Service Reform Act that we just passed. And now we're looking at something that's actually going to compromise what we tried to help the post office do. So it makes no sense. But what I'm concerned about is what about the rising costs in terms of future years? If, you know, how are you going to subsidize yourselves to continue an increase in cost for an electric vehicle fleet? Because the demand, the demand is in terms of energy and uh, uh, rare earth minerals, et cetera, is not going to go away. So how do you compensate for that? I would say that we're comfortable with the 10,019 that are in our acquisition today. Um, unless we have other resources, we would not advance beyond that unless we either find resources or they're made available to us. Um, we feel that the 20, that, that uh, 10,019 is a manageable proposition within the scope of all of the other activities that we uh, have underway to support the delivering, delivering for America plan. So, and I understand it. I mean, I get the, the energy, uh, I get the environment, I understand all that, but do you think it is worth child safe labor to have these cars put into your fleet? Ugh. Yes or no? No. And there you have it. And I have to agree with my colleague, Mr. Higgins. We should have a very honest, transparent conversation for the American people about what this means. We have resources here at home, but an administration that refuses to allow us to tap these natural resources, and yet we turn the blind eye on child slave labor around the world and somehow make it okay to invest in a fleet of electric vehicles for the post office or whatever else the administration wants to do. Thank you for your honest answer in that question. And with that, Madam Chair, I yield back.